What the heck is this car doing in my shop? Well, it's obviously a 2CV, a Citroën 2CV. Um, I got a call from my detailer the other day and he's like, or actually I got a call from him about a month or so ago and he was just like, will you work on a, on a Citroën? And I was like, uh, probably not. I said, I only work on Ferraris, obviously, but um, I said, I'm probably also too expensive. I mean, I just felt like I, I said, I, I usually don't like having people pay me to learn. And I've never worked on one of these things. And um, he said, well, I don't think the guy minds. He's just really desperate. He can't get this car started and, and he really would like to drive it. And um, he's and there's nobody in this county that would work on it. And I was like surprised. Really, nobody works on a on a on a Ducheveau? I was like, they're not that hard, aren't they? Like lawnmower motors. And he's like, well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll uh, I, I think this guy really wants you to work on it. I said, well, tell him my hourly rate. Tell him it's time and materials. And um, if he still wants to do it, I'll take a look at it. And uh, sure enough, called me back and he said, no, I I, I want you to work on it. So. I took it in today and um, I'm poking around on it and um, I'm trying to figure things out. I've, I just, the battery was out of it. So I've already figured out which one's the positive and negative. I'm gonna, you know, he's got some dryer sheets in here. Let me pull these all out. God forbid we start this thing in it. These dryer sheets catch on fire. So let me pull some of this stuff out of here. Oh, but you know, it's your typical, I think what's happened is that two things. I mean, obviously on any car, it's spark or fuel or compression. So um, I'm going to do usual checks. I mean, I could have just easily just said no, but I sometimes feel bad for people. I'm starting to realize that there, there, there are people out there who have cars and there's literally no one working on them. Like no one wants to work on them. They, they, they either want to work on new stuff or, or they just, they don't want to troubleshoot stuff. So I also am a little bit challenged. I said, I want to challenge myself a little bit. I mean, I do, deal with Ferraris all the time. I kind of know what I know, but I figured this would be a fun thing. And you know, I'm gonna keep in touch with them, make sure it doesn't go out of control as far as cost. But um, you know, let's see what happens. So first things first, I gotta get some power to this thing. Cause I think the battery, I just took, check the battery voltage and the battery voltage was down to like I think it was like 11 volts or 12, just barely 12 volts. So it needs to be, it needs a little bit of extra help here. So let me just put the the jumper starter on this thing. See if I can get it to at least crank over. I guess since it's an unknown car, I should probably get my fire extinguisher. I'm going to put this on engine start. This car has the crazy, crazy gear shift. So, choke. Okay, well at least it turns over. I want to see if I could remotely start this thing on the starter. I think that this cable here, I'm gonna put a test light on it. It's a little loose too. All right, so here's what I did. I just went ahead and got a new battery. Um, I was messing around with it and it just wasn't holding enough and instead of charging it, I just figured it's an older, it's like a four year old battery. Just went ahead and got a new one. Saved me some trouble of trying to chase that issue down. Then what I did was I found where the starter solenoid is and I hooked up a remote starter. I could start it from under the hood as opposed to having to go inside and can't really see what's going on. Next thing to do is I wanted to put um, a little spark tester in here. So um, with the ignition on, you can see I have spark. Now, from what I understand on these cars is that um, it's what they call a constant lost spark system. So it fires all the time, even on the on the um, 
exhaust stroke. So both of these cylinders should fire. I just want to double check that we've got ignition on both of them. So I've seen spark there. So we have spark. So um, it's probably fuel. So let me check out what's going on with the fuel system. Well, I got her started. It actually wasn't that bad. I mean, once I figured out it was some spark, um, I just added some fuel, checked to make sure the accelerator pumps were working, or at least it was drizzling down there. That carburetor doesn't look like it squirts, it just kind of drools down the... But um, I think what it was is just old fuel and the battery just wasn't giving it enough uh, power to fire the plug. So with a fresh battery and um, fresh fuel, I was able to get it started. Um, it seems to be running really well, so I mean, I don't think it needs much else. Um, I'm gonna go fill up some gas and um, try to run some of the old fuel out of this thing a little bit just to get the fluids going and uh, see where we go from there. But, um, well, the car starts, runs. I'm gonna put a meter on the alternator, make sure we got charging, and um, we're gonna go from there. I keep forgetting that uh, the uh, ignition is over here on the left. Starts really well right now. It's a little blustery today. So I don't know if you'll hear me through uh, all the wind noise on this car. This car is not exactly the most weather sealed car. I mean, when you look at the little gaps in the windows, um, it might be a little noisy, but let's see what happens. So it's a dog leg first. Here we go. It's a quirky little car. I don't know if it would be my first choice, just simply because it's not, just doesn't have a ton of power. I mean, it really kind of struggles. And it's kind of wallowy. You know, I think people fall in love with this car because it's so quirky. It's kind of cute, kind of ugly. You know, it's like a little ugly duckling. Um, and it's just, it's a very utilitarian car. I mean, I think that, you know, the story is this car basically put the French on wheels. I mean, it was an affordable car, lightweight. Um, could handle uh, tractor ruts. It was really to put the farmers in France, you know, on wheels so they could get into town and buy a car relatively inexpensively. And um, they made them for decades. So they don't have a ton of power, but they didn't need a lot of power back then. I mean, it's just, it just was more important to get, you know, four passengers um, and transport them. So each country has its own type of utilitarian car and um, this was France's you know we had the Model T in America we had the Beetle in um, in uh, Germany and um, you know and I guess the Austin 7 in um, in England so uh, each of these cars have like a history to them the interesting thing about this car is that the suspension is it different, the, the springs and shocks are different, the, um, the, uh, the shift mechanism is different. Like, it's just interesting how the French just have a particular way of doing things engineering-wise that's not common to anyone else. It's almost like they don't even look at how other people are doing it. They just design it the way that they believe is going to work and uh, they, they refine it and stick to it. So a lot of times you'll look at it and it's like, wow, no one else does it like this. 
Um, some things are cool. Some ideas are cool. Some of them are probably not so cool. But it's, it makes it for an interesting uh, mechanical uh, design. I'm learning about this car as I go because, like I said, I've never worked on a De Chaveau and um, I uh, read up on it a little bit. I knew that it was a two-cylinder engine, very little horsepower. I knew that um, it had a ignition system that would fire on um, intake and exhaust strokes, so it made it a lot easier than having to worry about um, running a distributor at half the RPM of a four-stroke engine, so they just ran it at the same speed and just fired it all the time. So I mean, I, I studied on it just so that I wouldn't be completely in the dark. I had an idea of what could go wrong with the car, but luckily I didn't have to do any of it. I just, it just really was just simple mechanics, which it was just, it was just old gas that needed to be pumped out of there a little bit and it needed a little bit hotter spark to get it fired. Once it fired up, it seems to be in perfect tune. Um, I don't think it's run much in the last four years. So um, there's really no reason to do a point service just simply because it feels like everything's idling perfectly. I think an oil change is probably um, probably a good idea. Although I don't even know <laughs> how to do an oil change. Is there, are there filters to this car? Where does it drain? Um, how much oil? You know, if you guys have a, if somebody out there has a two CV, certainly let me know. I mean, I'm sure by the time this video posts, I will have learned, but it's just interesting. I'm sure there's a, huge following of these cars certainly more than Ferrari perhaps um, and um, so you could direct me in the put me in the right direction although I don't know if I'm going to work on a ton of these things I know I have another one that this owner has that he's interested in, in sending to me simply because it doesn't run either both cars were kind of parked when ran and then and then he's been struggling with trying to get somebody to work on them so I will be getting that one in exchange for this one um, and then we'll go from there but um, like I said it's it's just a matter of uh, working on these two and uh, hopefully that'll be it it was fun um, it's an enjoyable uh, you know adventure but I don't know if I want to do another two CV one after another so the handling on this car is kind of funny it's it's very comfortable I mean the suspension has a lot of travel in it, very soft. And yet it doesn't really feel like it's losing grip of the road. Now, admittedly, the tires are super narrow, so it's not like you have a, a ton of grip anyway. But um, it seems to hold the, wet, the road fairly well as long as you get used to the body roll. I had a couple things I had to deal with on this car. Um, because it sat for so long, the electrics are all messed up. So I had to fix the uh, fuses. And I had to um, I had to fix some of the ignition wirings. You know, again, I think what happened was the um, the car sat for so long and probably damp and humid conditions through a couple seasons. So um, the electrics kind of the connections got bad. Um, and I actually found a fuse that was actually bad. It was it, the filament was still there, but for some reason the ends were intermittent. So you know, when I would touch it you would get continuity, but then all of a sudden when you released it, the fuse would, would not have continuity. So I finally just swapped it out and that solved the problem. I and mean, I wasn't getting a uh, fuel gauge or anything like that. So I uh, finally fixed that and got, got the ignition key to turn on all the, the gauges on the car. Um, what was funny was I, when I first got the car, it, it showed that I had a half a tank. So I went to the gas station to go fill it up. I figured I'd put like five or six gallons of gas in it. And um, I almost overflow, overfilled it when I put uh, two and when it, when it popped out of the back at two and a half gallons. Yeah, you can really hear that wind blowing, howling away. I and mean, like I said, it's a windy day, but uh, this car kind of gets blown all over the place. You know, it's got a really slab side to it, so. Uh, yeah, you're definitely going to feel the wind. Um, and right now it's showing 80 kilometers. So what is that? About 50 miles an hour, I think. Um, it's not bad. I, I could probably, uh, 
I could see doing 100 kilometers, but you know, I really don't know how comfortable I feel going much faster than, than 80 or 90 kilometers an hour. You can hear that engine moving along. All right, so now I'm pushing 90 kilometers an hour, and it's really getting a lot of wind buffeting. That's 100 going downhill. So that's 60 miles an hour right there. I don't know if I would go much more than 60 in this car. Boy, talk about like howling wind. I'm <laughs> getting pushed all over the road here. But, you know, it's a fun little car to drive around. You know, really comfortable. I mean, not harsh in the, in the, in the suspension at all. Um, really compliant. Um, and, um, you know, a nice summer day car. I think with this vinyl top down, driving around the summertime, could be a lot of fun. As long as you're not in a rush to get anywhere. <laughs>